The opening greeting for Epiphany is found in the cover of your service sheet. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most loving Father, whose will it is for us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing but the loss of you, and to cast all our care on you who care for us. 
Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from us the light of that life which is immortal and which you have manifested to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Think of us in this way, as servants of Christ and stewards of God's mysteries. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they should be found trustworthy. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. I do not even judge myself. I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive commendation from God. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The Gospel of the Lord. Apprehend God in all things, for God is in all things. Every single creature is filled with God and is a book about God. Amen. Amen. So, good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. So here we are. Um, do you guys know who Barry White Jr. is? Not the guy who sings, not the singer, but Barry White Jr., the public school teacher, right? I want to show you, in case you haven't seen this YouTube video, I want to show it to you because for me, Barry White Jr. provides a picture of the kingdom of God, right here. Okay, so for those of you guys that had to just sit here with your arms folded. Uh, um, so the, the, this was a public school teacher, and every, before every class, he has an individual handshake with every single one of his students. Every single one. And he says that he does these individual handshakes, the, the way they came about was for the student to kind of express who he or she is. All right, so he, he does, does this so that he can say to them, before they have to go into class, you're accepted for who you are. I accept you for who you are. I want you to be the individual that you are. And now we'll go into class and do the work we have to do this so that the potential that's within you can grow and come out. But it all starts with the acceptance. And it all starts with the acceptance of the child as the unique individual person that child is. And it, it's expressed through the handshakes. Isn't that great? And for me, that's the kingdom of God. For me, he embodies what 
Jesus came to teach us about each other, about ourselves, about relationships, about living life. You see, it all starts with acceptance for the unique individual that each one of us is. See, because Jesus will take it even a step further. Jesus says, you and I are made in the image of God. And so when we live out of our uniqueness, when we live from that place of uniqueness as the people that we are, then somehow or another, God's image is manifesting through us in and as our uniqueness. Profound, huh? <laughs> you get that though? Because I'm totally serious about this. It starts with us being the image of God. And that God's image is revealed and known Yes, in all of creation, but through each of us individually too. So when we accept one another as the individuals that we are, we accept a piece of God. We accept the image of God that is all around us all the time. That's why I love that so much. Because he does that. And now maybe this is just personal to me. Maybe you're like, what? <laughs> I, this is very personal to me because, I, cause, because what I really believe is nobody wants to be considered, if you're a student, just a grade. Or just the last test that you took. Or just a cog in the machine or just a standardized number. Or if you're an adult out here in the world, nobody wants to be seen as just a function or a cog in the machine or an ATM machine. Do you? I don't. And when people treat me like that, I bristle, I fall back, I pull back. You know, when, when they try to put you in a box or put you as a function or see you as only whatever, and, and once again, maybe this is personal to me because I've, I've lived as a clergy kid and now a clergy. <sighs> <laughs> All right? So, so as a clergy kid, I constantly felt like I was supposed to be a beyond human. Like I'm supposed to be an angel sent from somewhere else other than... And that was cool when I was a little kid, and every little kid on their own kind of way is trying to please everybody, at least I did. But once I got into middle school, I was like, dude, I do not want to be this anymore. And, and one day, <laughs> one, I was in eighth grade, and I had a cross on, all right? And my teacher, one of the teachers who just didn't like me very much, uh, um, <laughs> She just didn't like that individual part of me, you know? <laughs> just, just something, something, just we just didn't click. So, so I'm wearing this cross, and I usually wore it under my shirt, but because once again, because I didn't want to get stereotyped as, well, of course, you're a preacher's kid. You walk around wearing a cross, right? You know, so I had it in my shirt, but somehow or another it came out, and she grabbed it and held it, and she looked at the cross, and she looked at me, and she looked at the cross, and she looked at me, and she goes, why are you wearing this? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, what's up with that? The total opposite of Barry White, man. And, but, but essentially, she was saying, you don't fit the mold. You're not doing it right. Man, and I obviously I've carried that. I'm 53. I was like 12 or something like that then. You know, so I've carried that a long time. And I carry, but it's the same thing as a, as a priest at times. One of the reasons I hate wearing a collar outside of here is because I just get stereotyped, put into this thing that I'm supposed to be in. I'm not even sure what it is. It's unrealistic. Uh, you know, I, like I'm supposed to be perfect because I wear this collar. And all I'll say to you is... I'm not perfect, and if you want proof, come and sit with me at a basketball game. <laughs> and you'll be like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so I was at a game, we were at a game in Nashville a few weeks ago, and um, 
So I'm watching this game. And in the first quarter, you guys know basketball? Basketball is like the greatest game ever invented. So, so the first quarter, first quarter, and our team has 12 fouls. So you know what that means? That means that the other team gets to shoot two free throws every time they're fouled throughout the rest of the first half. It's unheard of that you have 12 fouls in one quarter. And the other team had one. So it was 12 to one. And, I, and, and I, by the 10th foul, I was, ap- I was going crazy. I mean, my mind was like, you guys are cheating our kids out of this game. That's what I felt like. And I, and I had to say something about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? You, you, you can't just let that go. <laughs> so, so, you know, the game went on and, and Webb won, thank goodness. No thanks to the refs. But, but we won. And if you guys are watching, I mean you. Yes. So, so, so the game, so the, so then we're back at Webb and we're watching, uh, watching the game during the week. And this woman comes up to me and she goes, I saw you at the DCA game on Sunday or whatever day it was. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> and, you know, in my mind, I said, oh, no. And she goes, and she goes, God, you're really into that game. And I said, yeah, I was, I was. And, and then I was just clinched. I was just waiting for the body blow. I was waiting for it. Because then she goes, you're a pastor, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking, here it comes. She's going to tell me how bad I am. And how I'm doing it all wrong. And how, how could I be a pastor and be that passionate about this basketball game? How can that be? As if, as if I'm supposed to... What? What are you supposed to do? I don't even know. And I was just waiting. I was just waiting. You know how you just wait and you just know somebody's going to rag you? And, and she didn't. She goes, yeah, those refs were just terrible. They were so bad. It, it, she goes, they were so bad, there's just nothing you can say about it. And she goes, I think I want to come to your church. <laughs> 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 But that's just it, man. It it felt so good for somebody to say, it's okay that you're human. It's okay that you're a human being and that you show that. And sometimes it's not pretty, but it's still okay. It's okay that you're you. Because in the end, that's what he's saying. In the end, that's what Jesus is saying. And in the end, that's at the core for me of the kingdom of God. That you are the image of God. That you are accepted by God as you are where you are. Yes, we want to grow from there, yes. But it starts with the acceptance. So here's what I want to do. When you come up to the altar rail, be it with Chris or with me or with Josh, do a little handshake. Think of your own handshake. And when you come up there, all right, but even if you don't, you still get the communion. Because, really, because, because who you are is good, and who you are is loved. And who you are is the image of God trying to come through you as you. Amen. Turning to page 358, let us reaffirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
The prayers of the people, form three, are found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We give our thanksgiving this morning for the communion anthem given to the glory of God and in honor of Rick Sidey's service at St. John's Cathedral. And the flowers in the altar given to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for the life of Alfred Hatcher and in memory of Margie Crumpton Huff. And the flowers in the chapel given to the glory of God and in the memory of Dr. Frank Tipton Rogers and the baptism of Eleanor Arrington Roper. And for the work and ministry of St. John's partnership with the YWCA and the Green Magnet Reading Program. We pray for all bishops, prayers, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer for any grief or trouble. We pray especially for John Chesney, Susan Conway, Susan Gagan, Molly Joy, Kimberly Curtis, Pierce Ray, Ginny Rogers, Jean Sanders, Francis Siler, Susan Wood, Sheila Aikens, Scott Bertram, Sharon Woodden, Sophie Cook, Ralph Copeland, Hilary Hartman, Connie Martin, Chris Rays, Mary Renfro, Teo Tate, Roberts, and Carol Swart. Are there others? We pray also for those who serve our country in the military especially those deployed overseas. We pray for all victims of war. We pray for all who are being persecuted and displaced because of their faith. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray especially for Joseph Bender, Fred Jenkins, Beth McCullough, Margaret Weeks, and Russell West. Are there others? We praise you for, for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come and share O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned Give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Okay, I have a couple of pretty, uh, pretty great announcements. I just like to direct your attention uh, to the back of the service sheet. There are two things there immediately that we'd like for you to pay attention to. One is that the Green Magnet School that we've been partnering with is having a book drive. Um, they're, they're declaring March 2nd Dr. Seuss Day, and they would like to collect as many children's books, new and gently used, as possible. There's a, a box over in the Green Hall. If you have any extra books around, to donate. That would be great. And the second is there is a, a food pantry drive for YWCA. There's a box of food over there, or if you didn't bring any canned goods with you to church, and would like to give monetarily. There are two baskets up here on the way, on the way forward for communion. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
great thanksgiving continues on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace.
close communion prayer is on page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. to the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.